Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Oh! Golf is always for closer. It's Simmons OGR Sports. It's 3-12-1, the Giants podcast. Bringing it to you live, bringing it to you fresh, bringing it to you funky. And you know what? It's day two of training camp. We're having a good time. It's always interesting when football comes around. Mr. OGR looking dapper, wearing his Bear Pasco jersey. You know you got to love it. Whoa, 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 Tim. Stop. Hammer time. No, 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 no. Sorry. Darius Slayton. Darius, I got the drops, Slayton. Yep. Darius, if you watched any part of training camp today, I got the oopsies, Slayton. Uh, you know what? I was going to save this for later, but uh, I really think the last wide receiver spot on this team, well, technically not the last, it's probably like, you know, for like the fifth spot. I think it's going to come down to Mr. Slayton and Mr. James, and I think James is going to take it. Uh, Richie's been in the league for like four years, or almost five I, years now. I understand that, but I would rather give it today. I'd rather give it to David Sills. For those that do not know, we are doing the podcast three twelve and one live here because you want to know why it's day two of the training camp. We're talking about everything Giants. I'm going to be out on training camp on Friday. <laughs> that should be fun. Uh, so you know what? Shockingly, I'm not very quiet. So you'll probably you'll probably see me. Uh, but you know what? I, 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 OGR, I didn't want to get into this and in, I didn't want to get into this right in the beginning, but it is a uh, pod. None of, actually guys, none of this show is like scripted at all. Me and Tim literally shoot from the entire hip, the entire time. <laughs> you're not supposed to tell people that you're supposed to tell, you're oh supposed to tell people I, this I is scripted. To be impressed with our skill. You were supposed to tell people this is scripted that we always talk about this ahead of time. We were actually were talking about bowling and frisbee golf before the first fifteen minutes on in our production meeting. We were doing we were doing that ahead of time. But I I want to talk about I want to talk about the experts. Okay. I want to talk about the so called experts. Which ones? Just all of them in general. No, no, no. You need to give me specific names because that's what you I don't I don't do. I don't have specific names. Oh Jesus! I don't right, have give specific some, names. Give, give Just. Me the- Give me the rumors, Tim. Give me the rumors. It's not rumors. It's 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 the it's the damn Twitter. It's the effing Twitter. What did I freaking tell you? And it's the effing thumbnails that come up on YouTube when I'm posting videos. I have to hear now, after two years, 24 months of nauseating, we love Joe Judge. Joe Judge is so wonderful. You just have to kiss the ring of Joe Judge. He's so wonderful. He he does nothing wrong. He's great. Oh, my God. We love him so much. Now it's Joe Judge was a failure. We knew it all the time. Joe Judge couldn't coach out of a paper bag. Joe Judge was too much of a disciplinarian. The shockingness of the ability to someone pivot like that in the paint is better than Patrick Ewing. Because I've I called it from day effing one. I'm going to correct you, right? I'm going to correct you right now. Go ahead. I'm more of a Kareem uh, Elijahwan or Elijahwan guy. Kareem Elijahwan? Yeah, Kareem Elijahwan. There you go. But I'm more of a... Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Yeah. Lou so, Alcindor? I actually meant to say Elijahwan, but I freaking screwed up the first name. So I, I'm more of an Elijahwan or a, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar guy anyways. I always thought they had better feet than Mr. Hewings. They may have a big, but I'm not even going to get to that. I'm, I'm also going to post the comments. Some of the comments we'll answer on the bottom as well. But my thing is this. You had all the people kissing the ring of the, jug, of the juggernaut who are now experts because of the fact that they said that he was a bad coach. You're fucking lying. You are lying. You're liars. Your pants are on fires. And I don't want to hear, well, we, we thought about it. We, you know, we saw it. We just, we were just, you know, we just, no, 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 no. I had to hear for two years how mean I was, how terrible I was, because he was an idiot running laps for players that are professionals. But now I have to hear about how wonderful Dable is because of the fact that he's playing bad rap music by Kadarius Tony. That <laughs> doesn't make the team any better. Sorry, it doesn't. You have a coaching staff, and I love this too. And I'm going to let you talk about it, but I'm mad about this too. You got a coaching staff, and a general manager has told us we need to lo- learn how to walk before we can run. We need to do X before we can do Y. We have to find things that are going to make Daniel Jones comfortable. We have to find a way to have him to learn it so he can learn how to protect himself on the field at year four. But you know what? 
you look at Twitter, you look at all the things else, we're winning 11 games. You got a coaching staff that basically came out during an interview yesterday and said, we are going to suck. But don't worry. For the clicks, the, le- the bleeps, the likes, and the bloops, we're going 18-0. to Oof. Be real. Be fresh. Be interesting. Don't be an asshole. Because I've said this a million times, people get their information from social media and you de- do a disservice by tagging your lines. I'm a giant expert. Really. If, you're, if your frame of reference on Twitter is Eli Manning, shut up. Don't even talk to me. Because you're not a giant expert. You're if not you a giant expert on the field at any point in time in your life, shut up. Don't talk to me. You know what? Even though we're live and I'm not going to be referring to the chat, so much, if you're in the chat right now, give I need me... To- Give me four di- or four, yeah. Give me four different starting quarterbacks for a Giants in the Super Bowl. Go. It shouldn't take you more than ten seconds. I already did that for you. Do you? Do, am I supposed? Am I supposed to do it again? Am I supposed to do Hostetler, Sims, and Eli Manning? No, no. I'm you also going to throw in Kerry Collins. You want me to do that as well? Yeah. That, that's what you should do. That's how quick you should come up with it. Honestly, if you're a Giants expert, you shouldn't even have to think about it. It should be you second should- nature. It should be second nature. And this is the other thing. And and, and I love it because people are going to fire me up in the chat. Mr. Alvarez even, even was pointing out that people are already hyping, hyping Kadarius Tony's great catches in the end zone and saying how wonderful a symbiotic relationship he has with uh, Daniel Jones. They were bad passes by Daniel Jones. That's what You are extending to... out of the end zone to make a touchdown catch. That is a good catch by the wide receiver. It has nothing to do with the quarterback. Do you notice? I, I read I read the transcript today, and even Giants media could not show the fact that every catch I hear about, oh, he you know he made a great diving catch in the end zone, or he had to he had to sky up and get the ball. That's not a good thing. He had a pirouette. I mean, what I do like is on some of these throws, it is a great catch by the receiver because there is some tight coverage. So I do like to see that. I do like to see that. I was watching. I mean, it is highlights, so I'll take it with a grain of salt because I did see another one where literally uh, James embarrassed. Uh, was it Xavier McKinney or Dan- Darnay Holmes? Literally embarrassed him Yeah, on one of the routes. But I, I can forgive, uh, you know, McKinney on that. We can, we, we can forgive Kim McKinney, but it's the over – hypeness of day of, of of this that you see from people it's it and this is what bugs me day one daniel jones is in mid-season form then he throws the interception daniel jones sucks <laughs> it's day it, one <laughs> here's the reality you i can already feel tell the, me the reality the, i can already feel the turning it, yesterday when you did your video and you talked about dable and shane they're already setting it up that they're going to be drafting a quarterback. The Giants guaranteed at this point are drafting a quarterback for next year. Guaranteed. The season hasn't even started. I I can already see the turning on Daniel Jones in the matter of moments since training camp started. They, the Giants are, in barring record, the Giants are drafting a quarterback next year. Because I looked at the free agent quarterbacks already next year. Jimmy and G. Jimmy G. And uh, what's his face there? The one for the uh, Guardians there, or um, Washington Commanders. The one that uh, Heineke is probably the two best guys you're getting. Tyler Heineke. Tyler Heineke and Heineke. Those are the two best guys you're getting. The Giants are drafting the quarterback. Those are the two best free agent quarterbacks. Oh, and then Tom Brady, but nobody's, you know, the Giants, no, stop. No, he's not. Tom Brady's not leaving any place that's warm. Hell, I don't want to leave any place that's warm. That's the Mm. bad thing. I won't BS him. Look at where you live. <laughs> it's warm right now. It's warm right now. But it's warm as we speak. It is warm as we speak. But I, 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 I just get mad because the other thing that pisses me off is, again, I, I see them all these videos posted on Twitter. Look at all that pre-snap motion. Okay, they're not going to use pre-snap motion every single play. They're not. I'm sorry. You may think they are, but they're not. <laughs> and the reason why there's you're seeing so much pre-snap motion because it's called practice. And well, yeah, and you want to get the timing down. That's so important. If everybody's stationary on a plate, it's a lot easier to execute when you have instead of somebody going in motion. Like 
that's just common sense. Common, common sense is always out the window. Common sense literally is. Like I said, I'm old school. My me, me training camp was two a days. You had a morning practice, you had an afternoon practice, and you wore pads both times. And usually they were full contact. I've talked about this in the past, and I, I'm curious what you have to think or what you have to say. I've talked about this in the past. I think it's the I think the CBA is causing a quite a disservice to NFL players now because they're trying to protect them. They're trying to, to have them sit there and say, you know what? We are going to protect you by not letting you practice. We're going to let you get hurt in games instead. And I think that's the problem. I think the issue is we're letting players not practice, not under the, anyone who's ever played the game will understand this hundred percent. There is no substitution for contact. There's nothing you can't you can't simulate it. You can't think about it. You need to you need to either feel it or experience it or deliver it. Tim, don't forget that the players go into collective bargaining and they want this. I know it's not like th- this is what the owners are doing that. Honestly, what you're going to see is less contact. You're going to see less as time goes on, because that's all that the you know owners can really give to the players. They're not going to give them a bigger cut. It's getting to the point now where it's almost split even. And you're not going to do that. You're going to want some sort of control. I don't really know what else they can literally collectively bargain, to be honest with you. No, there's nothing left. They've they've already – they've added a a regular season game. They've taken away a preseason game. So, I mean, you think about it, though. But I don't want to get into this because you're not – because we'll talk about that another time about this 17th game and how they're getting paid or how they're not getting paid. Uh, the players is, but we want to talk about training camp. We want to talk about day dose in training camp right now. You have been following training camp. I have been following training camp. Everyone's been following the training camp. I'm a pepper. He's a pepper. She's a pepper too. What is your first, the first two days that we've, that we've gone through training camp? What are your takeaways? Are, are, do you have any takeaways from these first two days? Uh, I haven't heard Wendell Robinson stand a lot. He actually was. He was actually uh, today. He was. Um, he he was one of the few wide receivers not to drop a pass, and he was working. He carried a couple times out of the backfield. Uh, well, that's good to see. I didn't hear. Anything. Well, from what I watched earlier and catching up on the transcripts, I didn't hear his name once. I no. heard Darius Slayton. I heard David Sills. I heard Kenny Galladay for making up a drop. I think earlier in practice. Yes. Um, with a big catch over the middle. That actually one of them was. Broken up by Julius Love, I heard too. Yes, it was. It was actually a drop, uh, which they almost credited as a fumble. Um, you know, to play your return. Dable today in his press conference kind of just like skipped over the fact about Mr. Robinson. Like he didn't skip over the fact, but he's just like he's just getting better every day. I'm like, oh boy, that's not starting off good. (laughs) (laughs) It's only been two days, Dable. It's only been, but that's the thing. It's only been two days. It's only been two days. It's, and I've said this before you, when you get into the dog days of August in training camp, that's when you're going to find out who's who or who is, who is whom. That's what you're going to find out who is going to start to excel the first day. And I've said this before the first day to me, the first you, we are going to get our first padded practice on Monday. That's going to be interesting. I wish I could go, but I got a lot of appointments on Monday. So, but I was going to go on Monday, but I, I had to, I had to switch to Friday, but we're going to have a lot of pad of practices on Monday. I already see Dable. I can already tell is not a big fan of the press. I mean, what coach is, but no. certain, certain play, certain coaches handle it better. And it's not even that his handling of it is right, but to waste time and get through the press press conference faster. I already see what he does. He takes very simple concepts and draws them out. But yeah, he's, bur- he's burning out the clock. Yeah. Which, is- which I, maybe other coaches do it and I didn't, haven't noticed it, but he likes to burn out the clock because he was just talking about like basic offensive concepts and the motion and whatnot. And he asked a question. He's like, you know, he took, he talked, he took like, I don't know, a minute or two to explain. Well, that's our job to get touchdowns. <laughs> I was just dying. <laughs> did you did you see any part of the f- day one press conference? Uh, I saw like I just saw the highlights and then I watched your video. 
You want to know why you saw the highlights? Because they didn't let anyone film the press conference. Reporters are not allowed to film in practice. Did you know this? They're actually relying. I saw it on Twitter. They are relying on Twitter users who are recording the practices to get information because they're not allowed to. Here's the, here's the problem that I see. And this is a failure by Mara already because Giants fans backlash. It happens and it happens quick. And we know he's affected by the fans. So oh, yeah, 100%. 100% that he is. Here's the problem. What's the problem? They're going to give. They're not the reprieve won't be as easy for Shane and Dable if they're going to sit there and try and control this narrative. It's going to backfire on them and it's going to backfire heavily unless they start allowing a little bit more freedom by the press and allow a little bit of truth to come out. Because if they try to hold this behind the curtain and then the season starts, my God, the backlash is going to be 10 times worse than if they just let everything leak out a little bit, little by little. You can, can still control it and just let it trickle instead of letting it to be like the Hoover Dam breaking. Right. You can control the narrative, but sometimes you can't. You're never 100% going to control the media. One of the things exactly. I found interesting in the press conference yesterday was when Shane was dire uh, was directly asked, you know, what, what does Daniel Jones have to do to become a franchise quarterback? And really, it was kind of like the it was kind of like the Dable answer. He danced totally around it, and and he never really gave an answer. And now I understand that Joe. I understand that this is not their guy. Daniel Jones is not their guy. I understand that. And I've said this before: you win, you want to win, and you want to lose with your quarterback, and you want to win, and you want to lose with your coach, your head coach. What's up, Mark Stewart? How you doing? We're doing, we're doing the podcast, but I'm still going to acknowledge people that are come jumping into the chat because you know we want everyone to go out and hype at three twelve and one the New York Giants podcast the 2022 season. So we want everyone to come out there. We got Mr. Alvarez in the room. We got Mark Stewart saying, "What's up, Big Tim? Mark, I'm going to be at a training camp tomorrow. Hopefully, you're going to be there as well." But you know, he didn't have an answer. He couldn't get. He wouldn't give an answer. And then when they talked to, to Dable about Daniel Jones, they talked about basically having him starting to crawl before he runs. And they basically says, we need to teach him how to protect himself on the football field. How long has he been in the league? How long has he played football? Three I years in the pro, four years in college, another four years in high school, and probably another three years in Pop Warner. And now they're going to teach him how to protect themselves? They, the problem is, why do they have to make it like, Maybe some fan will take that as an adage. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. But it's like for a season pro like ourselves, it's just like, okay, I see through the bullshit. You guys have no trust in this guy. That's you're not, what it tells me. You're not gonna you're not gonna pull him during the season. They're not gonna do that unless it's that bad. And I just don't unless it's Jake from State Farm from that bad. That as long bad. as they can get about 20 points a game, 21 points a game, they won't pull him. No. They're not going to. So they're just going to write it out because they want the highest draft pick possible because they're already looking toward next year. It's so blatantly obvious, and I don't keep meaning to repeat this because I've said this about what three, four, five, six times on six separate podcasts. But it's like, how can you not say it? That's the thing. Like, how can you not say it? it's so blatantly obvious? I and I don't. Even, I'm not trying to turn our attention toward that, but it's like, what else can you say? Oh, I don't fault them for their answer. I really don't. Because I don't fault them for their answer either. But why are they making it so blatantly obvious that we're drafting? Because you, you, a, you can't come out and basically say, "Well, he sucks." We're drafting the guy in twenty twenty three. They have, can, they have to give him some benefit of the doubt. You could do a better job, is what I'm saying. For I those, could make Daniel Jones sound better than he really is. For those that don't know, this is three twelve and one, the podcast recording live, and on this show. I am the voice of reason. I am the voice of optimism. It's that mean OGR. Who's the troublemaker? Who's the problem? Who's the problem guy? And yes, Mark, I, I, Mark, I'm going to be at training camp tomorrow. I was asking if Mark is going to be there. I'll be there at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. But it's OGR that causes the problem here on 312 and 1. He's always mean to Daniel Jones. I have this feng shui opinion and mood about Daniel Jones when I do the podcast. No, totally you don't. Different. No, you totally, don't. No, you totally, don't. Totally, totally different than my show. No. Totally different than my show. No. At, at, the end, at the end of the day, it's day two of training camp at the end of the day. 
I mean, that's all very true at the end of the day. And people always say, people, you know, say to me, you know, you could probably get more views if you're more optimistic. How can I be optimistic four hours into two practices over two days? Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen anything yet. I, I, I'm going to call bullshit right now on that. Okay. Has anybody bullshit. in the chat ever heard of Howard Stern when he was in his prime? Not Howard Stern now, who is a fucking cupcake. I mean in his prime. Back in the 80s. Back in the 80s. There was no optimism on that show whatsoever. So I call BS. People listen to the show because they hated him. There's no such thing as optimism. Oh, you'd get more views. No, it's about being slightly more controversial. Now, I'm not telling you that none of these opinions I don't believe in. I believe in almost every opinion I give you. So I would be considered controversial. But it's about, you know, I'm not saying playing it up, but but show emotion. Show a little bit. I mean, that's the whole point of this. You have to entertain while giving your opinion. I, I I don't I don't I don't Baba Booey. I don't disagree. I, I stole Mazinga's Thunder, Baba Booey. Um, no, but hey, but but you what you should do it. That's the next soundbite right there. There you go. It's gonna be the Baba Booey. Uh the Baba Booey. Um <laughs> the, the Giants have been making the Giants have been making some some moves or they, they've been moving just some guys in and out to me. They they I haven't seen anything. Now everyone talks about Jimmy G. Everyone, I mean everyone talks about Jimmy G. Vegas. Has us as the 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 leading contender odd wise to get Jimmy G. And I've said it before. I'd rather have the Garuffalo. I, I really would. I'd rather go read the book in, instead of having Jimmy G because he's going to want to get paid next year. You can't have Jimmy G, Daniel Jones, and Tyrod no, on the same roster. That kind of money. He's not. A, Jimmy G may make what he's making now. He's making twenty six million. Yeah, but. Did, what does he think he's gonna step out and go get 30 35? Dude, you haven't played a full season in God knows how long. Most career passes 466 in a season. So Jimmy but, G take Jimmy G's not getting starter money. He's gonna get below end starter money, if anything. Do you think he's gonna get more than Tyrod Taylor money? He will get more than Tyrod because a team will a team will realize that they're not in position to take a quarterback this year. So they'll they'll pay him. If they can be semi-competitive. Now, my other question is, there is there is um there's rumors coming to San Francisco. They're not if they can't trade them, they're going to release them. That they're they're just they're just gonna they're just gonna move on from go to Trey Lance. And you have a lot of people that have been talking uh, in giant circles <laughs> that um, we should then if 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 he's gone, then we we should definitely go, we should definitely go out and sign him because someone told me yesterday. Jimmy G gets paid either way. He's not going to be in a hurry to sign anywhere. He doesn't even care if he plays the season at that point. He gets and, to sit and, on the couch and still get paid from the San Francisco 49ers. And and the smooth sounds of Kenny G. Oh. <laughs> 23 million, not worth it guaranteed, Mr. Alvarez. Thank you. Um, he's probably going to still want 20 plus million, and you have six in cap space. And we all said that Shane wants to hold on six million to, to have operational cap space during the season. But someone told me on Twitter that it would be easy for the Giants to shed 20 plus million dollars to go out and sign Kenny G. Really? And how are they coming? How are they coming up with this math? I don't know. I'm not good at math. <laughs> I'm not good at math. <laughs> oh, are, are, are these one of these guys that believes that the cap is a living, a breathing. breathing thing? That's what it is, lover. It's a living, breathing situation. But I don't understand is it's, it's just the fact that you have all these people that love Daniel Jones. Are allegedly loved Daniel Jones from day one. They were big Daniel Jones supporter. But the minute you sit there and go, well, we can go out and get Jimmy G. What happened to the love for Daniel? I'm not even, I'm, I am not even a Daniel Jones, I would say, supporter, but I'm still for the fact that I would rather have him and not spend the money and go out and get Jimmy G. I'm still, I'm still enough of a, of a, I'm not even a believer in Daniel Jones, but I, I still understand that it makes no sense the, the way this team is constructed that you go out and get a quarterback. No, I, I completely think the Giants are, are set to draft a quarterback next year. You, you, you'll look, you're, it's going to be your second draft. You're still going to be able to, you're going to be picking your top of the draft. 
you're still going to be able to pick the guys, you, you know, players to improve this team, to add to the foundation we're building now. And it buys Shane and Gable more time. Right. Because you're going to give them at least a two-year reprieve on that guy. You're not right. going to make the same mistake you made with Daniel Jones. You're not going to fire Gable, you know, a year after taking his quarterback. I mean, it would just be stupid because then you're just repeating the same damn cycle. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm a firm believer is if that if that coach or that GM drafts that quarterback, you're going to give them at least two years at bare minimum with that quarterback before you bring in a new regime. And that's me. I mean, I don't I, know. I agree. I, I agree. People are asking, is 3-12-1 and one the, the prediction of the season? No. 3-12-1 is the 1983 season under Bill Parcells, which almost got him fired. I think it's going to be that level of a season. That's why I titled this podcast 3-12-1, and one, the Giants 2022 season. That is not a record prediction. My prediction? Pain. It's not a record prediction. It is just what I, I I just call it that because, like I said, I lived through the '83 season, the three twelve and one season, the terrible season. So you know what? That's just what that's that's just why I call it. James Williams is in the room. Frankie Hans is in the room. Also, we got a bunch of other people coming in here. I want to make sure that I said, OGR, your beard is on point. Same as Tim's hair. My hair is a little bit off today. I would I was drinking early <laughs> in the day so i didn't really get the chance to do my hair but you know OGR, hey, you're saying it's five o'clock somewhere it's five o'clock somewhere well it was 11 30 in the afternoon so i'm not sure if it was five o'clock anywhere i'm oh, it's past five o'clock in greece oh, okay then it's past five o'clock in, i was drinking on greece time because greece is the word the word the word you know you have so many <laughs> Tim lived with Frank when Frank. I did not live when Frank Gifford played. I was not alive when Frank Gifford played. You have so many people that are talking about pointing out the wide receivers and everything that's been going on there. You know what I? You know what I? I saw an ominous omission the last two days. Do you know what that ominous omission seems to have been? Surprise me. The tight ends. <coughs> yes, that is. That, I, have, that, I have heard nothing. It, I've heard nothing it, the last it, two days it, about the tight ends. But you know what? I'm all, you're you're right about that, and it does worry me a little bit because we were practicing red zone. The, thank you. You're thank you. I, and I, that, I, but that's kind of where I was going with that. I'm Jason Williams. What can I say? Are we, perfect exist? Are we white chocolate? Are we going to? not have a tight are, are we going to sit there or, or like i said it's just day two because we have no idea but are we going to literally sit there and do four wide receiver sets i'll do all that pre-snap motion and, and ignore the tight end there there has been some great tight ends and in, in the red zone in giant history I don't I'm, wearing, know. I'm wearing one of his jerseys right now a great like larry donnell Larry Donnell. <laughs> Larry Donnell. At least you didn't bring up Bennett. <laughs> Martellus Bennett. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Larry Donnell was actually pretty Larry Donnell was not a bad player. He was he was, he was he was he was actually not a bad giant. But I am seeing, like I said, I'm not seeing a lot of information coming out about the tight end. And I'm kind of curious about that because coming out with someone that had the team with like Travis Kelsey, the tight end was an integral part of that type of offense over well, here's the other thing the is I'm what I'm curious about Tim is okay even if we run a four wide receiver set and we line up in a lot of four wide receiver sets I don't mind it but once we slide in the tight end isn't it gonna queue up to other teams like hey we're gonna want the ball now we got a tight end in here well it was interesting because if you go back to the D, the offense last year there were times and opportunities when you had certain packages that came in you immediately knew what the Giants were gonna run yeah, which I'm, I mean, Mr. Dable and Mr. Kafka with all their great systems over with the Bills and the Chiefs, um, you should be a little bit smarter than that. I mean, again, it's day two. Right, it's day two. It's day two, and I don't mind running four wide receiver sets, especially bunch sets with a lot of quick guys on the field. It makes a lot of set, um, makes a lot of sense of getting the ball out quick and, and, and making sure, you know, trying to get one guy open, if you will, because that's right. the thing even though there's no rub routes in the NFL anymore. Bullshit. Now, Kafka has been calling the plays the last two days. And Dable was very non-committal when asked who was going to call the plays 
in the season. He at one point he basically says he's calling the plays for now. Kafka that is, and I've said this before. Kafka's been in the league for a hiccup. I don't tr- I, I don't trust the guy that has never been any type. He 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 was the po- his last year was the, he was the passing coordinator. Well, it's also a way of Dable testing himself. All right, testing, that's what, testing that's what I was thinking that he how he does against the mind of Wink Martindale. I and mean, he's that, also building experience. That too. So at the end of the day, though, we start that first game in September. Who do you think's calling the plays? Dable. <laughs> you could have pontificated <laughs> a little bit more about that. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I didn't. I guess I didn't address that as an open-ended question. No, you did. You did a terrible job. If that's what you're going for. That was great pretty, job, host of the show. That was that was pretty bad. <laughs> but you know what? The just a bit outside, tried the corner and missed. Um, yeah, I mean, I think he's doing it now for because people are getting really excited about him calling the plays. I think he's doing it now to give the kid experience. He's never called plays on any level. He's never called his own plays as a quarterback on any level. So this is his first. This is his first foray into the opportunity to call plays. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I said true. I mean, usually on podcasts, you have to you say things. To pontificate there. You know, I mean, there's not much to say. You're right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not used to being right so much. <laughs> I get, I get a little dumbfounded. I get a, I get a little, you know, awestruck that I get that I get that, oh, I, get, that I was that I was right. No, I just bullshit. Of course, it's Saquon Barkley. As, as I mentioned earlier, spent most of today working with the wide receivers. When asked why he spent most of the day working with the wide receivers, he says he's he's trying to enhance his skills. He's trying to work on his receiving abilities. And it was curious because someone had brought up that potentially he could go back to his rookie season where he's he's on the field for the majority of passing downs and he's used more as a wide receiver than a blocker. And we all know what happened. We all know what happened when he was when he was a blocker, what he's he blocks. Not very good. Not very well. Can you see is if they're going to flare him out more and if they're going to kind of to your point a moment ago, if they're going to use him more extensively as a pass catcher out of the backfield and third downs, doesn't that kind of lead to the same point that we talked about last year? Oh, Saquon's in the backfield. We know he's not blocking, so we can just cover him or we can blitz or we can try to chip him to before, before we know he's going to flare out. Yeah. And then also, the other thing is you're kind of tipping your hand as well, because if another guy comes in, you know, he's coming in to block and then he's probably not going to flare out. No. Now, maybe you can do something else off of that, but again, that's that, that, that's a problem. And now you're really making, putting more pressure on Daniel Jones to get the ball out quickly, which isn't his forte, which you've mentioned in this podcast again. Multitudes of times. You know what? I want to bring up a comment by Greeny Green because I thought this kind of ties in what we're just talking about. I think a four wide receiver set will get us blitzed into oblivion. Saquon can't block, and DJ always is a deer in headlights. And I think that kind of sums it up because I think that's the problem. I think if and and I don't think Saquon just sat there and went to Dable and said, I want to practice with the wide receivers. I don't think it was his idea. Nope. You know, it definitely has to, it definitely had to come from the head coach. It definitely had to come from, or or the the coordinator. I will say this compared to his rookie season where Saquon was more sure handed when giving pass catching uh, abilities with the, you know, the guy who shall not be named. um, He, he had the drop seats. Yeah. So that David probably sees that and says, Hey, I know you're more, you know, sound guy as far as catching the ball. Let's get you back into that as well. He probably saw that on film as well. Do you think that Saquon's a little gun shy coming out of the backfield? Because it, you you need to be a hundred percent honest that Daniel Jones got Saquon hurt in 2019. Oh, absolutely. You have to be honest about that. It was a bad throw that Saquon tried to get, and he hurt his ankle. Do you think there's anything in the back of his mind that he's a little concerned coming out of the backfield? 
Because he's, he's never been the same player that he had been since that first uh, since that rookie season in regards to catching the ball at the back. And now that you mentioned that, now I think back to the, his misses. They're all they're all alligator armed. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you're onto something there for sure. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was going to talk about. There are there are a couple instances that you literally can point out to and say yes, he had alligator arms. And People, I get I get worried about that. You saw that with Odell. Petro, I'm smart. Explain alligator arms. Those are, alligator arms. <laughs> Those are alligator arms. Alligator arms for people that don't know, of course, means, you know, usually when you extend for a catch, you do this. You extend out. But people have alligator arms to one of these. Do what Odell used to. Oops. <laughs> oh, couldn't get it. They don't want to extend that because they don't want to get hurt. And that's kind of what happened to Odell when Eli threw the ball over the middle too many times. That Odell, there was a couple of games I remember. One in particular in the Philadelphia, you had back-to-back plays with OBJ where he where he had where he had the alligator arms, or the crocodile arms, or the dinosaur arms, whatever you want to call it. The catchable balls, he just didn't want to get laid out. Actually, it's so funny. My uh, I, I recently learned, that, and you're not going to believe this when I tell it. A guy I used to work with years ago, his long lost cousin is Odell Beckham Jr. They traced out the family tree, and Odell Beckham Jr. is his cousin. And I actually physically saw pictures of this human being with Odell Beckham Jr. So I'm really curious to ask him questions next time he's on the job. <laughs> See, that's actually, that's pretty interesting. I actually found out today um, that I live next to a former Philadelphia Flyer Ooh. who is a Stanley Cup champion Philadelphia oh. Flyer. Oh, I was gonna say. I, I was hoping. I was wondering if it was the one that got moved to uh, Florida. Over yeah. no, it was kind of <laughs> funny though because I, I'm always walking my dog in the backfield, and the guy was like, "I see you all the time." He goes, "You got to stop at this guy's house. His name is Blank. He used to be a flyer. He's actually got the the Stanley Cup ring and everything." He's like, "You, you have to go over there and talk to him." I was like, "Well, if he's got beer, I'm there." <laughs> so I, I, I'm all, I, if it's Bush Apple. If, you know what, guys? <laughs> I tried Bush Apple beer today. Now, I don't know if it was because I was drinking at 1130 in the after, 1130 technically in the morning, but it was no, really good. You were on Greek time. You were on Greek time. It was like 630 in the afternoon. If I were a rich man. Oh, if I was a wealthy man. Uh, you know what? It was it was good. Though. I don't want to talk about that because you know what? We are doing the podcast today, and the podcast is only 45 minutes long. For those that are joining, this is 312 and 1. We're doing the live version of the podcast. You can also go find us any place that podcasts are found or podcast goes out. And we always have a segment of the show, which is always my favorite segment of the show. And I try not to steal his topic. And usually what I do is usually somewhere in between the first 37 minutes, 40 minutes of the show, I take away his topic. But today, as always, OGR sports always, we always give him the mic. We turn over the mic because I get stupid. I mean, outrageous. Stay away from me if you're contagious. And we have him give us his, his, his pontification of the day, his, his, his mind blowing thought process His something that he will tell us that we will remember in the annals of time forever. And that we will never forget as giant fans that we will one day point back and look at the clock and say, July 28th, 4.53 p.m. OGR said this. I also cover topics like disc golf and Tour de France, if anybody cares. <laughs> no more disc golf. No more disc golf. Uh, what, is, uh, what, is your, what is your giant thought of the day? The giant thought of the day actually goes back to the subject. I, I that Now I think about it. You know, I, 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 we do have fullbacks on the roster, correct? That I'm, I'm not no. mistaken. No. I thought we did. But anyways, it, going back is I was going to talk about, and he did kind of steal the thunder, is the fact that, that we no, we didn't hear about any tight ends, really. And the, the no fact tight ends today. Or yesterday. And we're in the red zone. Like, you, you're going to run the ball in the red zone. Now, I understand, again, you know, a lot of it because of non-contact, how much really running are you going to be doing? It's basically a walkthrough and guys are just kind of like, okay, I'll kind of see you off the hole here, you know? But yeah, I don't like the fact that we didn't hear much about the tight ends. Were they waiting for Mr. Bellinger to come back? Is he going to be like... He's, the- He's off the pup. He passed his physical. He's so. back. He's on which the field. Good, which, which is good to see here because, I mean, both of us were high on Mr. Bellinger coming out of the draft. I mean, he's kind of been overly pumped up by the uh, Giants in-house media, which I don't like. 
And, you know, a guy is, fans it, is it. But wait, a minute, let's wait, wait, let's go back to that a second. I, I want to talk about the first second. I, I'm not going to interrupt your thought, but I want to talk about this second. Has the it is it the in house media that has pumped him up, or is it the giants' social media and content creators that have pumped him up? I, I think it's a combination of both, be honest. Okay, okay, because I like I like him, but I said this before I said I think we have a pretty full tight end room. Obviously, I not full. I think we have two professional, we have two. I mean, Ricky Jones Seal Jr., you know, and and the other guy, I can't remember his name, the guy came over from Texas. Action. Yeah, we, we have two prof- uh, Atkins. Is Atkins or Atkins? We have two professional tight ends on the roster. Two professional quality starting tight ends on the roster. So I'm not going to sit there and tell you it's it's not like uh, uh, Jeremiah Hall is listed as a fullback. Yeah, that's what I thought. I I was reading about Jeremiah Hall today. Yeah, but like I said, I do find I do think it's interesting that like I said, I'm not. I I always wonder who's pumping them up. Who's pumping this kid up? Because. He's a he's a fifth round draft choice, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. <laughs> he is a fifth round draft choice, but he wasn't utilized as much with the Aztecs, um, San Diego State Aztecs, because they were more of a running team, anyways. So I'm curious because what, you know, given opportunities, we saw he had you know some nice catches, and he was able to be productive with the limited amount of time he was given, even yeah. though he was on the field mostly for uh, blocking purposes as well. I agree. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to grab a chat question here. Cause I think it's interesting for Mr. Alvarez has Kayvon played yet. It feels like the defensive rookie hasn't had been mentioned as a major player. And you know what you think about it? I, again, I haven't really read anything about Kayvon either. You know, actually the guy that they highlighted today was Ellerson Smith. Yeah. He had one good play. <laughs> no, no, but they said, and then they, they also said that he like, was in the backfield and they would have been sacks had, you know, the, he could actually hit Tyrod Taylor. Well, there was a one play that, uh, that was, uh, Daniel Jones was credited with a great throw. They actually said would have been a sack, <laughs> you know, but either. And, that, and that's a, that's kind of like a long lost guy. We're not really talking about at all. either. Well, he's not even lost. He was, he was on the field last, he was on the field last year for a handful of plays because he was injured. He is literally a foot Smith. He is literally a foot taller than any other giant I've stood on. And I think I have pictures of it on one of the videos I did, but on the, when I was on the sidelines last year, I took pictures of him and he was literally without his helmet on a foot taller than everyone, than every other giant on the field. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm curious, you know, what he's gonna do, what he's what he's gonna be about. I mean, you know, you you're obviously not too high on him, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm yeah, not I'm curious. not too high because it reminds me too much of, of O'Shane Zimenez. I hope he's better than O'Shane. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I might be better than O'Shane. These last two seasons. I'd like to see Tim coming around the edge. It wouldn't be very fast. But. It would be. <laughs> do you have a sundial? <laughs> that's about, there you go. That's what you're gonna need to clock me coming around the edge. You're gonna need a sundial. You're gonna need one of those what you call it ones, the one with the sand and you know, the timers. Once you flip over, you're gonna need one of those. You're gonna need a you're gonna need a sand uh, sand dial, whatever the hell they're called. Because uh, I'm so, not. I'm, I'm, no, so basically, you coming around the edge is gonna be the same time as this podcast, about 45 minutes. The podcast is usually 45 minutes. Like we're running, up, we're coming up to that 45 minute hour. Um, I am gonna be at training camp tomorrow, which is Friday. So hopefully I'm I'm bringing out I'm bringing out the family to uh, to see the Giants to get the first look. We'll, we'll probably do maybe I don't know I'm not probably not going to record live from the training camp because I got other things to do because I want to hang out with my family. Uh, but if I do see you, I'm going to say hello. <laughs> Trust me, you'll you'll know it's me. Uh, and don't forget August fifth, we are doing the Coaches Club ticket giveaway. You are going to be able to we are giving away one ticket to the Coaches Club. You are going to hang out with me. <laughs> OGR Sports. <laughs> and you're also going to hang out with the venerable James Williams. And Dominic Palmer is flying all the way in from the UK to be there for that game. So we're going to give we're going to give that ticket away. We're, we're, we're going to have we're going to have some fun doing that August 5th. Are you joining the August 5th show? Of course I'll be on the August 5th show. I've got nothing better to do. I, I have no responsibilities right yeah, now. Yeah, no responsibilities. LJ, I have not a chance to check my email. Hopefully that's in regards to the ticket. I did send you the ticket yesterday. Uh, through training camp, I do have uh, three. No, I have two training t- training camp tickets available for tomorrow. 
Uh, if you are interested in one of those two tickets or both of those tickets, just email me at Tim at online, big blue.com Tim at online, big blue.com. I'll send it to you via email. You need to have a Ticketmaster account or a Ticketmaster app or the giants uh, giants account. So you can download that ticket. For some reason I got eight of them <laughs> for Friday. I don't know. Giant sent me eight. <laughs> giants really liked him. The Giants, the Giants, because Tim has an inside source. I have an I have an inside source with the Giants because you know what? Yo, Matthew, we're getting ready to leave, but Matthew's in the, his house. Um, you know what? This this is the three twelve and one the podcast. You know what I'm gonna do though, OGR? I'm gonna close out the podcast, but don't anybody go away because I want to run through some of these chats re re real quick before we do anything. So we're we're we are just gonna we're just gonna close out the podcast because we need to do that. We need to do it. We had our intro. We need our outro now. I have to go all the way through here. No, Jared, we'll answer a couple questions from from the chat because you want to know why OGR. It's always time. It's always time to have fun. This is Tim. This is OGR. This is three twelve and one the podcast. Glad you enjoyed. Glad you could be here. And you know what? We will see you next week all right everyone we did the podcast right now we're going to answer some questions right now irish river says great stream thanks for doing thanks for being there we're going to answer some questions outside the podcast i have to lj you have to work that's all right man uh i'll, I'll pull back the ticket so that's no problem there's, there's no uh, irish rover says great stream enjoyed listening uh motorcycle 360 sim go have a snickers no i'm not that hungry like i was yesterday uh tim's inside source says is the plumber at the facility hey listen it's either the plumber or the electrician. And you're fine doing electrician. <laughs> and I'm and I'm and I'm hanging out with electrician right now. Um, hope everyone, you know, like I said, hope everyone enjoyed the the, the little podcast that we just had. Uh, what do you think about the Yanks getting Benny Bats? They traded for him. They did. Benny Bats is that Andrew Benatendi? Yeah. Oh. Did they trade for him? I have to go look. I did not well, know. That's shocking. Because that that really piss off the Red Sox. I didn't know. Uh, I don't. I didn't know they did. I I didn't. I did not. Uh, I'm trying to look. I'm trying to look up Yankee news right as we speak. Yankees. Let's see what they got here. Yankees. Buh, 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 buh. Uh, yeah, they did. Seventeen hours ago. <laughs> wow. Evidently, <laughs> Evidently, and OG and I were, were were not on the ball there, but yeah, that's a, he's one of his favorite players. Uh, let's see here. Yes, reported last night. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they traded last night. Yeah, everyone said yes for three prospects. Did not know that. Yeah, that was good. I think that was a good. I think it's a good move by the Yankees. I think it's a good move by the Yankees as well. I thought the Red Sox should have never gotten rid of Andrew Benatendi. Yeah, he had a down year, but he's a solid bat, top of lineup. Who was the guy the Mets just got? The big, who, the big guy. I can't remember his name now. The guy looks That's, like a house. <laughs> it's so funny because I play fantasy baseball. And you think I would know, but I don't. No, because I like him. Because he looks like a house. I saw him standing on first base yesterday <laughs> after getting a single, and I and my wife would go. My wife looked at me and said, "That guy's huge." And she goes, "And not like she's like, and I'm not talking like he's a you know, I mean, he's like talking. That guy's like huge. like." And she goes, "His head is like this." And I looked at her and I said, "Oh my god, he is huge." <laughs> I said I like I like I like big fat guys that can't fit their heads in their helmets. I love I love I love those guys. The Babe Ruth. Those, those those are Babe Ruth. <laughs> Babe Ruth. That's 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 what I'm talking about. But I, that's just it's just uh, you know what's his name? Uh, John Crook. When he used to play with the uh, when he used to play with the Phillies, I I liked him too. He was one of those guys. And you had uh, Pete Inglevilia. <laughs> No, I couldn't get his head in. Um, but, you know, I hope everyone enjoyed the podcast. It is every place that you can find podcasts. It's on Apple, uh, whatever, the, you know, Google Play Store, everyone. So anyone that does enjoy it, if you do have an opportunity, you want to, like, you know, give us a shout out or tell people to go listen. Or post it on your Twitters. Or post it on your Twitters. That would that would be nice. And like I said, I do appreciate the people that stopped in and uh, – and, and you know, hopefully, hopefully enjoyed what we did today. Uh, this is on one. This is a one-time thing. Oh yeah, the man just traded for a big fat guy. Speaking of, yeah, I can't remember if anyone can remember his name. I can't remember his name. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank right now. But uh, you know, good. One, you can always look it up. I could, but I'm not that interested. <laughs> I'm interested to a point. I uh, hope we go live soon. Yeah, we're gonna go live soon on Sunday. 
We're going to do our 1030 show. So that'll be the next live stream is at 1030 Sunday. The P Oh yeah. Dan, what's his name? Dan Vogelaga. Vogelbach. 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 Oh yeah. 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 I like him. <laughs> I like him. He's I big. Like him. Huh? He's huge. And it, you're almost like, can he run? <laughs> and then he scored, he scored the other day. And I saw that, and I'm like, and again, I'm like, damn, that's a big guy. Martinez scores runs for the Red Sox, too, and it doesn't get much slower. So <sighs> Vogelbach was pretty slow. <laughs> he had he needed two sundials, <laughs> but he got across he got across the plate, though, man. So I got I got to I got to give him all the credit in the world for that. But we will be live Sunday, 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our regular Sunday show. Uh, and then we will be. Um, uh, we'll we'll be back on a regular Tuesday or Wednesday schedule. So we'll do two live streams a week. Uh, let's see. We got a, Mr. Roberts got a question. If the Knicks do trade for Donovan Mitchell, will the trade happen before or during the season? I personally think it's going to happen before the season. Yeah. I think the Knicks are just holding out. I think I know Miami Heat is trying to gather some first round picks to use as assets, but the Knicks can trade up to eight of their eleven right now. No, the the, the Knicks have more more to trade, and they need somebody like Donovan Mitchell. And they actually have young guys. That they could young guys that they could throw in. I'll check my inside sources because my dad is my dad has a direct line to Tommy. Put it that way. We make sure, but yeah, and you know what? That's true. Irish. The Yankees do need a pitcher. I mean, yeah, they're going. You know what? That's you could you could score a million runs, but if you give up a million six, that that's what shocked me because I think you know a lot of people you know surprisingly if you haven't been following following baseball. The Yankees have the lowest ERA in all all baseball as far as um, pitchers go, as far as starters go. <clears throat> it might be the whole rotation, including the bullpen, but I just don't see it holding up in the playoffs. I don't. No, I, I don't see it. I and I, I that's one thing. I I'm not a Yankee fan. I'm a Met fan, but I am worried about you know you you do sometimes fall into that trap of a playoff run. Uh, that you're not a playoff team, that you you are you are a regular season team, and when you get into those short series with guys that got three, four deep on the pitching, that you're going to run into the, you're going to run into that issue. And also, if you guys like to hear traps, um, Tim also likes to try and bait me into traps on three twelve and one. Yes, I do like to bait him in the traps. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going. I'm going to lie, but I, I I I I do enjoy baiting him and trying to and trying to push him into to the right way or the wrong way. Uh, healthy Degrom. Degrom had a good. Uh, he didn't have a great. Um, he didn't have a great outing at AAA. I think he gave up four runs. Uh, but you know what? It's good to see Mr. Degrom coming back. Scherzer looked really good yesterday against the Yanks. He, he made uh, Aaron Judge look foolish a couple times. So I'm, I'm, I, that's the one thing about that Yankee lineup, man. I, you know, I know they're the best team in baseball right now as far as record wise goes, but it's just like, I can see them fall, falling back into what they were doing last year. Mm -hmm. So I agree. I agree. But then, then they can't blame Houston for stealing signs. You know? I love how, where this has turned. We were all New York giants and then boom, baseball, baseball, basketball, football, movies, you name it. Guys, this is your chance to ask questions about the giants. Get on it. Uh, let's see. Matthew wants to know their deadline will be getting to ground back and maybe adding to the bullpen. I would be, I would be interested to see if the, I mean, I, I don't think that, I don't think the Mets are going to make that, that huge splash. We, I think they do need some more bullpen depth. Uh, I'm still concerned about starting pitching. You I know. think that's going to be, uh, you know, is going to trade away pieces because it just makes sense for them to do it now because they're at back at 500. Um, All right start off horribly to me, it would be the Red Sox. Because, I mean, if everybody knows, I'm a Red Sox fan, not a Yankee or Mets fan. Yeah. I mean, my problem with the Mets is it, it reminds me of the old, I mean, the old days, you know, old Cleveland days with Spawn and Sane and Pray for Rain. Um, and, and that's what you're going to get when you get DeGrom back. I mean, they, they have some guys that can move the needle at times in the, in the rotation, but are, are they going to be consistent enough? I mean, I had what, a Mets rotation can hold up better in the playoffs than the Yankees, to be honest with you. Well, if you're healthy, yeah. If you have the, if you have DeGrom and Scherzer as your top two guys, yeah. <laughs> I actually expect the Mets to make more waves. I, I, I mean, maybe it's just the Boston Red Sox fan of me speaking, but I just see other teams being more capable in the playoffs than the Yankees. 
And my thing about my thing about the the Mets is, and I find it interesting, especially if you talk about the Yankees. I think the Yankees, what they have, sixty three wins right now. Yeah. And I think the Mets now have sixty one. Yeah. And there was this whole thing that the the, the especially with the Mets that the, the Yankees were so far ahead of the Mets at one point in time. They were so far ahead of the Mets in reference to win totals, and now they're like two games apart. Yeah, because the Yankees haven't really been playing good ball since they uh, since the All Star break. Yeah, really haven't. Matthew says, I've seen plenty of good vibes from the Giants training guests thus far, but it has to translate onto the field primetime, though. Can't see. Here's the problem, Matthew, with, with all these wonderful vibes. All the negativity is they're not allowing any of the negativity. The Giants do not allow the press to record any of the practices. They're not allowing any, they're not allowing any negativity. They're controlling the narrative. The only way you get any true information is either if you're there or if you read the beat writers' Twitter. back. Ugh. No, and that not only that, it's just like, you know, I, I mentioned this in the podcast. Like, I could just see this, you know, the house of cards falling down very quickly if they don't kind of allow a little bit of negativity to go out there. You know, a lot of times, not to go off topic too much but it's apropos a lot of times what you get is propaganda from the media and trying right. to control the, narrative. the giants need to do a better job of propaganda you can't just look positive all the time you need a little negativity mixed in you need you need some negativity you need something you you need you can't not everything can be peaches and cream you, you need to have you need to have you need to have the yin to balance out the yang streaming now Oh, something streaming now. Something streaming now. You need to have that to balance it out, and 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 I do think that's going to be. I do think that's going to be interesting. I do think that's going to be uh, something to watch because we, you know, I've talked about this before. Jr. I mean, the giant media will turn against this team at, at nauseam at the drop of a hat if they aren't allowed some type of access. And even if they even if they don't even get some sort of type of access, you can see them getting very pissed off, especially toward the start of the season. And we'll, you know, they'll they'll tolerate it in training camp, they won't tr- tolerate it during the season and especially after uh, I could see some of the um preseason games as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it it'll be it'll be it'll be interesting to, to, to say the least this year. So we'll, we'll have to kind of we'll have to kind of figure it out from there. Uh, I'm going to OGR, don't you leave, but I'm going to end the stream right now, guys, because I got to run upstairs and I got to eat. But I'm going to talk to OGR for a minute. So, you know, what? hopefully you enjoyed the the free preview of 312 and one the podcast. It will also be posted every place that you can find podcasts. Yo, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we're, we're signing out, man. <laughs> We're signing out, man. What are you doing? But hopefully everyone enjoyed the podcast. If you could, like I said, link it on your Twitter or your Facebook or your Instagram or whatever you whatever you're on. Uh, help us out. Help us grow. And we're going we're gonna to kind of move from there. OGR, we are going to be out of here. Appreciate everyone for tuning in. And we'll see you. I'll, I'll see everyone on Sunday as, as OGR plays Frisbee. I mean, froth. You didn't hear that. Didn't hear yeah. that.